Hey students, this is Mr. Anderson. Um, I am going to uh, show you how to draw P2-11. My old video is uh, basically, it's two years old or so, um, and I was having keyboard issues when I did it, so I had to do things the hard way. Uh, we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's start off. Uh, I'm going to, let's see. Do I have, there's my grid. Okay. Uh, you don't have to have things identical to what I've got, okay? However, we do want to start here and we do want to make sure, okay, I've just got one line type in here, okay? I'm going to show you how to add a line type. Now we learned how to do this up in chapter three. So just keep that in mind. It's uh, chapter three, chapter four goes over that stuff. Um, but this is a this is a good you know uh, tutorial on how to do that. So what we do is we click layer properties. Okay, this comes up, and we're going to go up here. There's you see these little four stacks of papers. Okay, we want to hit the one on the far left. It's got a little sun or star next to it. That just means we're adding a new layer. Okay, and I'm going to make this one a center line. So C E N T E R center. That's good. We're going to keep it white. Okay, the line type though, we need to change that. So I'm going to click there. Now I've only got one line type loaded, and we've already got that for the zero. Okay, the zero layer, which I like to use as my drawing layer, but some people like changing colors and stuff. I'm not really big on different colors, um, unless it's for a uh, electrical schematic, then that's basically required, okay? So, what we're gonna do is we're going to click load, then we're gonna just scroll down here, there's center right there, these are all in alphabetical order, okay? So I'm gonna hit center, hit okay, then I'm gonna click this one to highlight it, and then I'm gonna hit okay and this automatically changed to a center line, okay? So that'll be the only thing you really have to do on this, this right here. Now, next thing, I'm going to draw some lines just to uh, get a baseline set up for what we're drawing, okay? So I'm gonna draw one line here, and, oh, that's plenty big. It should be, I've zoomed out way far. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> there's one line there. Now I'm going to find the center part of that line. Oh, let me show you that. Your O snaps. So if we, uh, that's this box right here with the little box up in the corner of it. If you pick the arrow next to that, you pick Object Snap Settings. Now, I've got every one of these selected. I don't need every one of these selected. Um, okay, that's a good, that's good right there. But and I just hit select all. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it like that for right now until I have to turn one off. So I'm going to come over here and that selects the end or the midpoint. So now I'm just going to draw a line and uh, I'm going to tell the line to be a grand total of 100. Okay. Wow, that is huge. So let's, <laughs> there we go. That's going to be the full length of, of what we're drawing here. So now I'm going to offset that 25 each way. So we hit offset. That's the little racetrack here going around the corner or the two C's one inside the other. So you click, you click this and then you tell it what the offset distance is going to be. So you type in 25, enter. There's that one, there's that one. Now, this time, I'm going to trim 
that so that I don't have all that huge line sticking out there. Now I'm going to start offsetting this line here. So the book says the first intersection we're going to come to is 20. So I type in 20. The next one is 60. So I hit that. I hit 60. And I start with this one here again. And I just click on this side. Now if I clicked on the other side, it would throw it way over here. Watch. If I hit enter, well, there we go. And I do that. That throws that one over there. So I don't want to do that. Now, the next one is going to be 70. So let's type in 70. And these are all from the farthest, you know, from the first line there. And then we have a 30 and a 40 line here. So, 30. And then we go 40. And there we go. That's Now these are going to be the lines for the little fishtail thing. Okay. Now, since the only line we really need to remain a center line is this one, I'm going to do this and this, and then I'm going to select the zero line just to make them solid. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the ellipse. Okay. It's going to go from this line to this line and up to this line. So we click up here, it's underneath the rectangle. So we click axis end. We want to make sure we're in our drawing line, not our center line. And we click there, we click there, and then we click there at the perpendicular. And there we go. There's that. Next, we're going to draw, there's going to be two circles on this one, okay? But one remains, or one, only one of them remains a circle. It, uh, the other one turns into an arc. So, it's a diameter 30. So, we go circle, diameter, here, 30, boom. There's that one. Now, the... Other one is a radius 20, so we can do circle, center radius, click there, tell it 20, and there's that one. Next, we're going to put the polygon in there, the hexagon, and that is going to be inscribed a 20 diameter circle. So go up here to rectangle, click polygon. It says number of sides. It has six. Specify center. Right there. Now, it's going to be inscribed, so I hit the letter I. And then I tell it, it says radius of circle. Well, the diameter is 20, so the radius is 10. And now we see that it is flat on the top. It needs to be pointed at the top. So we're going to click here. We're going to hit rotate. Select the center. And look at this. See this? If we just go straight up, that changes the orientation. Okay? So now I can, I can delete this line and this line this line. Alrighty. Next, we have, let's see, we have, let's do the two R45s. So we're going to do a circle, center radius. The center spot is right there. So we tell it 45, 
And then we do the same thing up here. Select there, 45, there we go. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is put these circles over here. One is a 10 diameter, one's a radius of 10. So, circle, center diameter, 10. Circle, center radius, 10. Now, the fun thing with trimming, if I select this line and this line, or circle, I should say, and then I go up here to trim, if I click there, that takes everything that's outside of the line of that circle. Same deal here. Now, we don't need this piece or this piece. Or over here, we don't need that or that. Okay? And next, if we go back up here and just hit trim, we can trim this. Now, we also want to get that faint circle that's hanging out there. And then we want to get this guy on both ends, just like that. And we're left with what looks like some kind of a batarang thing, okay? Something Batman would have. We need to round these corners off, okay? So, that's where the 4XR2 comes into play. That means it's going to be uh, have a fillet, a rounded edge of a 2 radius, four times. One, two, three, and four. So, we go up here to fillet. Now, all of these have... You know, you got to answer these questions down here. So we're going to select the first line, that one right there. Now, it says select second object or space, I'm, I'm sorry, or shift select to apply corner or radius. So we're going to hit R for radius. And then we're going to tell it to. Here. And then we select the next one. See that? Automatically does that. Then all I had to do is hit enter. And boom, I click them just like that. Enter, click, click, boom, look at that. So there we go. That part's done. Now we get to mess around with this end. So I can take out, uh, let's see, that line and that line. We don't need them in there anymore. So now, and I'm going to erase that line there. I'm going to select that, hit trim. I do need it out here, but I don't need it right there for right now. Okay. So now we've got this area. So we're going to go, we need to offset it 5 and 15, this line right here. So we go to offset, 5. We're going to offset it up and down. I'm going to go to offset again, tell it 15, and up, and down. Next we're going to go to trim, and we're just going to randomly go around. It's really not random. I mean, there is a reason we do it. Okay, now there's that. And also take these guys out. And these. And this. And this. Okay. Now, next, we have more of the 4XR2. Okay. So, we go back up to fill it. We still have that command in there, that information. So, all we got to do is click there and click there. And see there? It made the fillet. So, I hit enter. Do the same up here. Enter, same down here, enter, just like that. <clears throat> and now, we can trim this guy. We don't need that guy anymore. And then the last but not least is the 2X, 2X45, okay? That's not a fillet, that's going to be a chamfer, right there. 
So, down here, if you read, chamfer, select first line, or yada, 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 yada. Um, I'm going to click on distance, or I'm actually going to type the D there for distance. And the distance is actually 2 by 2. So 2, enter, 2, enter. And then if I just select here and there, it does it. There and there. And that is how you draw that. Okay? Piece of cake. This is perfect. And again, I just drew it. <laughs> Not only am I good at I'm a good teacher, I'm also modest. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, I'm here to help. Uh, just try to get caught up. I understand how things, you know, especially a second eight week class, you know, it's, and ECTC is the only school doing that right now. I mean, we've got everything set up for eight weeks. Um, it can be a little hectic for a lot of people. So, you know, I apologize. Um, it was not my plan, but, you know, we're going to make it happen. So just let me know how I can help you. Okay. Take care and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.